What's up, puppy? Wanna do a video? Let's do a video. Hello, YouTubers. This is Fragbox TV. My name is March, and today we are going to talk to you about sand. So maybe you have a saltwater aquarium. Maybe you're thinking about setting one up. Um, one of the things or topics that are discussed quite often in this hobby is substrate. So personally, I'm just going to throw it out there. I really like substrate. Aesthetically, it looks very nice. And we're using an unusual one in this tank. It's not something we normally sell. I decided to go with something a little bit thicker. It's called, let me go get the name of it actually. Okay, I found it. It is called, and there it is, Special Grade Reef Sand. It is from Carib Sea. And when you're adding sand to your tank, it's a little bit thicker than normal sand. Um, whenever, when you're adding sand to the tank, I think a pound per gallon is the old rule. I still think it applies. Um, some of those old rules that have been around for a while don't really. But I think that one's still there, maybe just under a pound. So 50 gallon tank, 50 pounds is usually about right. So I went with this one because it's slightly thicker and you can kick up the flow in the tank and you don't really have to worry about it moving around. So it's quite annoying when the sand moves. Um, you don't actually want it to move that much. It's, um, I knew I was gonna do some SPS. This is a lot less acro or SPS coral than I'm used to in a tank. Uh, the, the idea was more LPS and softies. So it's just nice to have it a little thicker because you can increase the flow. You know, if you want to turn up the, uh, the flow and really mix it up, you're not going to disturb the sand bed. You're not going to send it everywhere. So that's why I went with this one. It's not the nicest sand. It's a little bit thicker, but uh, I think it, wor it worked out. It looks pretty good. Aesthetically, sand is more pleasing. And then there are a couple other options I'm going to show you. This is probably the most common sand that we sell here in the store and see in people's tanks. This is the Arag Alive from Carib Sea. We're using it here in the Evo. And we are also using it in our Red Sea Reefer 250. So I think this is probably the nicest, like aesthetically pleasing sand out of the ones out there. It's not too fine. It's on the finer side, so it will blow around if you do kick up the flow. But it's got a nice kind of white crisp look to it. And it just makes the tank look like the ocean. It looks very much uh, natural. Now that's not saying you have to do sand. I'm going to show you one more option actually before I start talking about bare bottom. This is black sand also from Carib Sea, the Hawaiian black sand. That's what Dylan's running here on his Fusion 20. I really really like this sand. It's very unusual. Um, it looks cool though. You get a lot of contrast from the corals and if your sand bed's a little dir dirty, if you're dealing with algaes, it more or less completely masks them. So I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but um, it always looks fairly clean and the corals against the sand just really really pop it looks really cool Dylan I don't think he's a fan of it you don't like it right no I made him do it I'm um, sorry Dylan but yeah it looks good I, I like it and we don't sell as much of it but it does give it a different look so we run both of them here in, in the tanks just to show the different let's say the two main purposes behind running sand you do get a lot of biological filtration tons of good bacteria live in the sand and aesthetically it's quite pleasing it does look more like the ocean or maybe a natural reef that we're trying to create um, you don't necessarily need it so if you look at our frag tanks here this is a large 1500 2000 gallon system as you can see absolutely no sand and as well in this red sea reefer 170 we're running here same thing no sand so the tank does not need sand it's not a necessity it's up to you so the benefits are the bacteria aesthetically look really nice but when you don't run it the benefits are you can see detritus build up so in this tank it tends to build up in this back corner over here we get tons of detritus building up and because it's building up in that one spot it's easy to go in once a week grab your siphon and then suck it out in these tanks same thing it builds up tends to build up in this spot right here unfortunately with some of the dead snails and then we have another spot right here just because of the way the flow is designed that's where our detritus in the tank builds up so that's one of kind of the positive things about running a bare bottom tank they look kind of, it looks cool too if it's if that's your uh, your cup of tea aesthetically i think they look nice some people hate it some people love it but it's up to you you don't necessarily need sand the one thing to note though your tank's glass bottom is going to turn completely purple just like this one does here so again it's it's personal preference i think it looks kind of cool um, matt's tank here he's trying to grow out some nice jack-o-lantern Leptoceras, sorry, Mr. Yellow Tang, you're in the way. Can you move? Anyways, he's trying to grow out some nice um, jack o' lantern there, and this Favia will eventually probably touch the bottom of the tank and start to take over. 
So one of the downsides then about running sand, um, the detritus can build up over time in the sand bed and it's not really a problem um, unless your tank gets really old. Sometimes we run into this thing called old tank syndrome. So the, t the sand can be clogged, but I never ever clean the sand bed of a tank. I don't recommend cleaning the sand bed of your tank. I think it should never be disturbed. And if anything, just add um, cleanup crew members that will gently sift it and clean it. But I don't recommend gravel washing your sand or using a siphon. I, you know, um, I've only seen people create lots and lots of problems by doing that. And then you're ruining all the, the benefits of having sand. You're taking out all that beneficial bacteria and you're mixing it. And I've seen people that have tanks running he healthy year, two, three years, and then they read or hear that they need to clean their sand and go ahead and do it. And it's very easy to crash and disrupt the system by doing that. So I use things like this. This is a spider conch over here. This guy is amazing at mixing the sand bed. He's got these cool kind of grooves coming out of his shell and a very big cleanup crew mixed of uh, Nasarius snails and other conches, sand sifting starfish, stuff like that. So I don't think you should ever um, clean or actually disturb the sand bed, leave it alone. Another thing to keep in mind, uh, a reason why you may want sand besides the other reasons we just spoke about is that you can keep very cool fish. So some wrasses want to sleep in the sand and they're gonna get stressed out and die if you have a bare bottom tank. And there's also very cool pairs like this pistol shrimp and goby. Sorry to disturb you guys, but these guys really want, oh, there's two of them in here. Hi guys. So these are actually paired up, these pistol shrimps with the, um, with the gobies. So these are, these kind of really cool and neat symbiotic relationships are only possible um, if you have a sand bed. So just something to keep in mind if you like that kind of stuff. Okay, that's it for today's video. And I'm not trying to convince you to add sand or take out sand or wash your sand or anything like that. Just kind of talking about the different reasons why you may or may not run sand in your tank, but it's not 100% necessary. And yeah, it's really just up to you. So that's today's video. If you guys got any questions, as usual, name, number, email, all that at the end of the video. I'm gonna leave you today with this very nice, mmm, look at this. Anyone know what this is? Maybe I won't tell you what it is. Maybe you can comment in the bottom if you know what it is, but it's actually one of my favorite corals. It's really unusual and it's cool and it's got, um, it's white. Can you move fish? It's white, but it's a healthy white. So usually white in corals is a sign of bleaching or dying or not being happy but this one is white and healthy so that's kind of cool i'll leave you with that mystery coral today thanks for watching guys